Welcome back, it's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary, and we are a Quapel of Nerds, and today we are going to be reviewing Back to the Future Dice Through Time. But before we begin, don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe, or follow us on Facebook. And um, a little bit about the game. This is a game by Ravensburger. It was uh, designed by a Chris Leader, Ken Franklin, and Kevin Rogers. It's two to four players, ages 10 and up, and plays in approximately 45 to 60 minutes. Right, yeah. I would describe this as a lightweight game. Um, it's available at Target. That's where we actually picked our copy up, or local game stores. So it's pretty easy to get translated. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump in right into the categories. So, first of all, we got story slash theme. So, the story slash theme is obviously the Back to the Future movies. And I was really feeling the theme when I was playing it. Um, you have to draw cards, and when you read the cards, you read different scenes from each of the movies. And then you have to uh, pick up associated items that remind you of different items from each of the movies and mm -hmm. deliver them to different points in time. So I was really feeling the theme, especially with um, having to travel through time to be able to deliver them to the appropriate locations. Right. So the story is that Biff stole the DeLorean, went through time and messed everything up, and then we have to come in and put the items from the movies back into their respective locations and timelines. Um, I didn't feel the theme as much as Mary did. This thing is plastered in Back to the Future quotes, mm -hmm. items, scenes from the movies. So I, I get that, but I didn't feel the theme because you're not playing a character from the movie. You're just sort of a, a nameless, faceless being that's just sort of uh, popping in and doing the stuff that the characters did in the movie. Like there's an event where Marty's getting hung from the third movie and Doc Brown shoots the rope mm -hmm. and saves Marty. But if we're playing as Doc and Marty, then to try to do that event, the Marty character couldn't do that yeah. event. So you're not characters from the movie, you're... Um, like you have said, to be third person. Yeah. For this. Right. Yeah. And, and so that kind of pulled me out of the theme. Where I, I get it, I mean, there's no mistaking this is a Back to the Future game. Plastered all over everything. But um, it didn't really feel thematic to me. Um, there is no overarching story, it's just the little bit about Biff stealing the time machine. That, that's it for story. Um, gameplay. So, this is a pick up and deliver game, and it's also uh, a dice rolling game. It's cooperative, which of course is one of the reasons that we selected mm -hmm. it. Um, but there, it, it's cooperative with an independent feel to it. So it's, um, you know, we've played cooperative games before. We are working directly together. You know, sharing cards, um, sharing pieces together, trying to 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 meet a, a common end. And in this, you are still trying to meet a common end, but it, it's like you're working individually on your own to do that. Now there are a few chances for you to maybe help each other out, but in most cases you're just kind of off on your own, um, just trying to work to reach that common goal at the end. Right. In the component slash art section I'll show a picture of the board, but essentially you could leave dice in the past and someone in the future can use them. So it would be similar if you left a hammer under a rock in 1955, theoretically yeah. it would still be there in 1985. Assuming it didn't rot out or someone stole it in 30 <laughs> yeah. years. But then that person traveling in that timeline could use that hammer for something. And we did utilize that. So, I mean, you have the ability to, he, he could have left dice for me and then I would have picked them up. We did utilize that, but only he utilized that just for himself. So he left objects for himself. Mm -hmm. um, we never actually utilized, we're, utilized it when we played where he left dice for me or I left dice for him. Right. That hasn't happened yet, at least when we played. Right, we, we've we tried. We've left dice there because we couldn't use them in hopes that someone would need them in the future and then just 
as the events come out randomly on the board, you couldn't use them that turn, so the person might as well pick them up. Mm -hmm. um, we really enjoyed the gameplay. It's a quick, fun, easy to learn game. Easy to play game. I think we only made one play mistake the first time we played it. The second, third time we fixed that. Um, with our schedules and having young children, we enjoy quick games that, I mean, I love big, giant, overarching stories. I love role-playing games on, you know, for video games, but for a board game, can't really leave it out with a one and three-year-old running around because your pieces are going to get eaten. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it really met our schedule, met our, our requirements, and we really enjoyed it. Yeah, I would definitely say we didn't reach a full 60 minute mark on that. No, no, we, I would say we're probably in that 30 to 45 minute range. Mm -hmm. Now I could see if you had two other people yeah. kind of getting closer to 60 minutes. Um, Taking longer. And yeah. then also there's different levels of difficulty. So I guess as you increase your levels yes. of difficulty, yes. maybe that could make it take a little longer. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, that's something we forgot. So you have... Each timeline can have up to five items that need to be returned to their original spots. And so on the highest difficulty, you choose all five items. On the lowest difficulty, there's only two items. Now, they're randomized, so you don't know which where you need to go. But um, that's something that, that, that's nice, that you can increase the difficulty or decrease the difficulty based on your uh, play style. Mm -hmm. So, um... Now we will cut in components. Do you have anything to say to Future Doug? I love you. Real convincing there. I wasn't sure what to say to Future Doug. Future Doug, he can be a little ornery sometimes. I was going to say, Future Doug, get me some chocolate, but I really can't eat some chocolate. It would not be a good thing. Okay. So... Okay, here we got the game board set up. Um, you tell there's a DeLorean for each of the timelines. Uh, you always start with the clock tower. There is a Biff for each timeline. And that same art style where they don't have eyes and that much detail but the cardboard's real nice and Biff has a starting spot in each of the timelines here you got this out of time tracker and basically what that does is keeps track of how much um, disruption of the timeline has taken place if you reach 12 you lose so basically on your turn, you're on a two-player game, you will grab three event cards. So we got the enchantment under the sea dance. So that, and it tells you what year and where does it go. So there you got Doc introduces the De DeLorean time machine to Marty. 1985 Twin Pines Mall. And then here is an event. DeLorean won't start, so everyone rolls one less dice. <clears throat> so now, in this example, if you wanted to clear out this event, you need to make your way here. You have to punch Biff to get him to move. And then you have to use the symbol in this corner to achieve that event. Now there's three of each event in the same category and they'll stack up and you have to do it in a single roll. So it could be you need to use all four of your dice to clear out that one event. If you do clear out that event, you get an item card. In this case, Marty's guitar and it needs to get returned to Hill Valley High School in 1985. So once you clear out this event, this card goes on your player board. Now you need to get 
from 1955 to 1985 and go to uh, the Hill Valley High School, you drop that off and that does a couple things. Number one, it lowers your, fixes the timeline, some lowers your out of time tracker and it also gives you an Einstein token. Einstein is of course Doc Brown's dog and basically you flip it over and it's one of the symbols on a side of a dice and you can use that as a dice so that could be sort of like your fifth dice it goes up here and any player can use them again you're working together this is the uh, first player marker it's a DeLorean steering wheel I thought that was pretty cool But these tokens here get what they call them paradox tokens. So if we end at the round, let's say the board is exactly the same. We end at the round. One location has a um, event, an uncleared event. So we would gain one on the out of time tracker, and then it would get a paradox token. Now let's say no other events were added, or we cleared them off, and it was just this one here only remaining, but this time it had a Paradox token. If that's the case, it'd move up two. Now each space can only have one Paradox token, and if there was, let's just say two events here, um, it counts the number, whichever one has, whichever location has the most, or whichever... Yeah, whichever timeline has the most active events by location um, that would trigger that. So in this case, we would get two on the tracker for these two. Um, again, three, four, five, so on. Um, if you had, and this happened to Mary and me, we had three events, all with Paradox tokens. We gained six. This only goes up to 12, so we died in about five minutes on that game. Um, here are the dice. They've got uh, a different side on each one. So there's a fist to punch Biff. There's an arrow to move within the timeline. Doc Brown gets rid of Paradox tokens. Um, the wrench is sort of like a wild card, can be anything. The flux capacitor allows you to change in between timelines. And the lightning bolt allows you to re-roll all other dice, which can be handy. Then again, you can use the Einstein tokens. And uh, you can see the different player boards here. They're nice and thick. Uh, and it, this one might be a little warped, but they have slightly different variations in some of the artwork. And you can tell that's the future one, the future of 2015. Here's the past. So you got the cowboy theme. And that is pretty much it for components. Anyways. <laughs> so, uh... Little car, I hate little cards. My fingers are too big, I can't shuffle them. Um, it really shrinks down the art, which is especially a problem in this game. Um, I, these cards, they also have a really bad habit of sticking together. So there'd be a time where we would grab our item oh, return and you accidentally grab two. Or you grab events and two or three of them come up. So these cards stick together and they're a little a horrible combination. We did really enjoy the thick tokens and thick player boards though. That's that's not flimsy, it's not gonna get you know, if the dog chews on it, you got thirty seconds to get it, it's not one of those super fragile things that just get destroyed. Um, one other thing I would have liked to see, and this probably isn't um, an option because it would probably make the game cost too much. But in each of the back, the four Back to the Future, or three Back to the Future movies, there's a different 
the DeLorean is modified. Mm -hmm. So this, you have the DeLorean tokens, but they're all the exact same, minus the color. So I thought it would have been cool to have, like, the rail wheels on the 1885 car, have the flying one on the future car, you know, kind of just slight modifications. Other than just color. Other than just color. I mm -hmm. thought that would have um, really made it kind of pop. So, um, I guess with regard to the dice, the dice were, they're, they're just ordinary dice. I mean, you have matching dice to match your color, but um, they're not engraved, they're printed. And I could definitely see that printing on there that's been, it's like a, a type of paint, I, you could scratch it off probably pretty easily. So I worry that over time that maybe those will wear off if, if you played the game too much. So that could probably become an issue in the future. And the card art was pretty uninspiring. Um, when you look at the actual pictures, it's supposed to be like a scene from one of the movies. So Doc falls in love with Clara, and it's supposed to show Doc and Clara. And it really doesn't look anything like Doc and Clara from the movie. Um, and you would think, well, you know, maybe maybe they're, they're trying to do their own rendition. It just didn't remind me even of the scene from the movie. Um, it, it was it was completely different. And it wasn't um, not very detailed. It was like kind of like picture outlines with mm -hmm. some color in them with no detail at all right. so um i would say that the art's pretty pretty boring and disappointing um you know of course you have the art on the box which reminds you that it's back to the future the little delorean so mm -hmm. you still have plenty of reminders you know the flux capacitor um design is something that's that stands out from the movie that everybody remembers so you're always going to remember based on the symbols different things from the actual movie that that still reminds you that it is a Back to the Future game, but the art on the cards just wasn't there for me. I almost wonder if they didn't run into some sort of copyright issues with getting the actors' faces on them. Maybe. I mean, I don't, I don't like games that have, like, the photo picture art. Um, I like an artist's rendition, so I couldn't imagine they would get in trouble for that, but basically the, the pictures on the cards don't have eyeballs. <laughs> And that's kind of, you're like, it, it just strikes you as odd. And, Eyeballs or mouths, usually. Yeah. So it's just like hair and eyebrows. <laughs> so it's kind of kind of weird. And, you know, they didn't really get, you know, the wrinkles of Doc Brown or the youthfulness of Michael J. Fox. It was just sort of like, not stick figures because they're, they're not thin. But, yeah, just no details. No, mm -hmm. And it might have been because the cards, the cards are tiny. Yeah. And you can't fit a ton of detail in a tiny card. Yeah. That's true. So we put all of our games into one of three categories. Play means it hits the table as often as possible. Mm -hmm. Display means you leave it on the shelf and break it out when the mood strikes. Or stay away means you leave it at the store and wait for someone else to buy it. So for us, this game is a uh, display. display. Um, we did. We had a lot of fun with it. We don't totally agree about the feeling the theme. Um, and some of the components we thought could be improved, but overall it was a fun time. It's a quick 30 minutes, fits in well with our schedule. I think every time you play this game, you will watch the movie after you're done. <laughs> Which That's did. exactly what we did. Uh, the movies are great. So, or it could be vice versa. You know, you catch back to the future on netflix and think oh let's go downstairs and play yeah. the game after this movie or have it have the movie playing in the background so i, I think it's one that we're going to hang on to and uh, enjoy in the future yeah absolutely all right i'll do it we'll see you next time thanks guys bye bye, bye. would you say you're the doc brown or marty and our group. Doc Brown. So I'm the handsome one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the mad side. Her daughter's head's a bit like a bowling ball. <laughs> it's also heavy and um, drawn to the floor. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. That's my fault. Got a big head to hold all my brains is. You don't think smart? Yes, I think you're smart. Thank you. Is that so hard to get a compliment out of you? Oh, 
I compliment you all the time. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. When was the last time you complimented me? Earlier today. What'd you say? I said you were handsome. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. When? You weren't paying any attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I make it less cute. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I can't chug this one. No. I don't know. Is St. Elmo, is that local to Indiana only? This is like a a whiskey coke in a can. This thing has some has a kick to it. Yeah. You sip. You sip. You know why I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs>